Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Refine Horizons, and we try to have something called Teaching Tuesdays at Refine Horizons. That's where we take an hour or two to train our team. Uh, I haven't been doing a good job of that, so I've been working hard to prepare study material for my team, in particular my my friend Danny. Now my phone's ringing. Hello? What's up? So, what I've been trying to do is work through a couple of books. Uh, so I'm going through Brown's Boundary Control and Legal Principles, and I'm going through a book on land tenure. And there's a couple other books I want to go through. I want to go through Evidence Procedures for Boundary Location and Interpreting Land Records. So most of what I'm going to be teaching is going to be about boundary surveying because uh, that's primarily what we do here at my company. Uh, but I'll, I'll probably cover some other topics too. So what I've got for selected chapters of those books is a little study guide that explains the key terms and key concepts. And then when I can, I want to do these videos. I'm not going to go through the key terms in these videos but I do want to walk through the key concepts of, of each chapter in these videos. And then I, I will, I think I'm going to add some, some practice problem solving uh, questions to the, to the study notes. So hopefully the study notes and the videos will be posted online. I think they're going to go, uh, they're going to go on my personal website, landonblake.com. And then uh, I'll put them on the Redefined Horizons learning channel, the videos. Okay. So what I want to do in this video is cover chapter one and chapter two of the book on land tenure. And I apologize, I don't have that exact title with me. Uh, but if you Google book on land tenure, <laughs> this book will come up. I believe it's by uh, William Coles, one of the authors. So the next video I do, I'll, I'll bring the book and I'll show it so you can find it. Okay, so chapter one's short. It's only a couple pages, but I want to go over the, uh, the key concepts uh, in chapter one. So give me a second to do that. Okay, so I want to go over some key concepts about land tenure from chapter one of the book. And I've got my notes here. This is the actual, the notes for the study guide. So chapter one uh, is only a couple pages and it basically has three concepts, but they're really important concepts. Before I get into the concepts, why are we learning about land tenure? Uh, land tenure is basically how a society or civilization decides that land is going to be held and the rules that, that go into property ownership. And that's really important, of course, for boundary surveyors because that's what we deal, we deal with that a lot. And boundary surveyors are a key part of most modern systems for land tenure. So that, that's why we're learning about this book. All right, so what are the three key concepts in chapter one? I'm gonna go ahead and write those. I'm gonna put them up here. And then if I can get my video technology to work properly, I might also highlight uh, key points down below on the screen, but okay. so. Here's the first key point. First key point from chapter one, real property, land, is an important part of the economic foundation of most modern civilizations. What that basically means in a nutshell is in societies or civilizations that have a good land tenure system, they tend to be wealthier. In places where there isn't a good land tenure system and it's hard to identify who owns land and to protect those land rights, those places are tend to be more poor. Okay, so real property, really important part of the economy of most modern civilizations. So what does that include? That includes the ability to treat land as an asset that can be traded, bought, sold, or used for collateral and lending. Okay, so you want to be able to you can generate economic activity if land can be bought, sold, traded, used as collateral. Okay, so. In essence, you're, you're allowing land to be traded like other economic assets. So in order for that to happen, this is the second point, to use land as an asset like that, an economic asset, you need to be able to uni uniquely identify land and describe it. And we're going to talk about that more. Obviously, surveyors have a role in that. And then in mo most places, the methods that a society uses to describe and uniquely identify land have developed along with boundary surveying and a system of landmarks, so property corner monuments or, or natural monuments. So in essence, what chapter one is telling you is land is really important. It's important for the wealth of societies and for economic activity. In order for land to build wealth, you got to be able to uniquely identify it and describe it. And surveyors have 
kind of filled that role. They Part of their job is to uniquely identify and describe land and, of course, to mark it on the ground with physical objects, which we call monuments. But that's the first key concept of Chapter 1. All right, let's go on. What's the second key concept of Chapter 1? Let's write that on the board. All right, guys, the second key concept in Chapter 1 of Land Tenure is that modern civilizations have substituted a system of legal rules for physical violence as a way to protect ownership and other rights and lands. Okay, so what does that mean? <laughs> what that basically means is we have a legal system here that we use to protect property ownership. So in a society without those legal rules and a means to enforce it, Basically, if you've got a bigger gun or a bigger baseball bat, you can go beat somebody senseless or shoot them and take their property. Okay, so uh, there's some problems with that system of physical violence, right? Uh, one is it's obviously not just uh, the and and uh, a second consequence of that system is it it creates a lot of unnecessary uh, loss, right? In in health and life and. It requires that society devote a lot of resources to protecting land. So you can imagine if, if every parcel of land had to be protected like a bank vault, that would impose a huge economic cost on society, right? And so what most civilizations have developed is they said, hey, that's not a good system. It's not good to have people fighting over land all the time. We're going to come up with a set of rules that everybody in society is going to agree to follow. It's going to be rules about how land is owned and sold. And when you don't follow those rules, we're going to give the government the authority to punish you. All right? That's basically the system that we've come up. So we've got some, some bullet points here in the study guide that we want to go through. So we talked about a couple of these. When you substitute legal rules for physical violence, when it comes to protecting land ownership, that has economic benefits. We talked about that. A key element of those legal rules to protect ownership of land is the recording or registration of land ownership and land transactions. So let me talk about that for a minute, because there are two things in one there. What that means is, in order to, to get away from this system of physical violence, you have to have an, a system that everybody agrees on to do two things. Identify who owns property, the current owner of the property, and, and kind of a subset of that is you got to have a system to record when property is bought and sold. So in order to identify the current owner of land, you have to know when land is bought and sold. So those two things together. And so the legal rules that civilizations come up with to substitute for physical violence when it comes to protecting property ownership involves knowing who the current owner of land is and when it's bought and sold. Okay, and we'll talk some more about what those rules are. They talk about it in the book. And finally, the legal rules related to land ownership and the system of recording or registering land claims and transactions is what I call a cadastral system. They don't make the leap in this book quite this directly, but, but I do. Now I'm going to draw that over on the other board because it's a real key concept that we want to understand. I want a different color pen though. So, <clears throat> cadastral system, which is one of the key terms in chapter one, okay, if you want to think about it the way I define it, I, and I don't know exactly, this is exactly how the authors define it, but the way I define it, cadastral system has two parts. Okay? So one is the legal rules that have to do with land. How it's bought, how it's sold, how it's protected, what you can do with it. And we'll talk more about that in this book. Okay, and the second part is a registration system. Okay? And you remember we talked about that registration system needs to do two things, okay? So we need to know current owner. We need to be able to identify that. Current owner of a specific parcel of land, okay? And also, in order to do this, we need to do something else, which is we need to record land transactions, okay? And we can think about what do you need to record? Well, you need to know who's selling, who's buying, and what's being bought or sold, right? And we're getting a little ahead, but in the United States, we do that with the recording system. And we're going to talk a lot more about that as we go through this book. All right, that's concept number two. So we don't beat each other with baseball bats anymore to take land. We've got a system of legal rules, and that includes re resolving disputes about land, who owns land and who gets to use it. Okay, so here's a three key con the, the third key concept. Number three, third concept, 
from chapter 1. Okay, and it has to do with the cadastral system. I should mention as a side note, in this book we're primarily talking about the cadastral system of the United States, but the basic principles that we talk about could apply anywhere in the world. Okay, so third concept of chapter 1, the cadastral system needs to perform three key functions. Okay, what are those? We talked about, we touched on them, but I'm going to go ahead and read them here. Cadastral system needs to define how land and rights to land can be held. So there's different ways you can hold rights to land. Okay, so for example, land can be leased, it can be rented, it can be owned. Okay, or a right can be held as an easement. Those are just some different ways in the United States that we can hold land. So there's different types of rights, ownership rights and land. Okay, so the cadastral system have to, has to define those. What are the types of rights that you can have in land? Number one. Number two, okay, the other thing it needs to do is it has to define how you're going to uniquely identify, describe, and mark parcels and how you're going to find those parcels after they've been marked. And that's really the surveying component, right? Your cadastral system needs that. So how do you uniquely identify land? How do you describe land? How do you mark land on the ground? And how do you retrace the boundaries of land after it's been marked? Okay, and that, that all has to do with, with land surveying. You know, if you think about it, in the United States, we use written land descriptions, but you don't have to use that. You could, you know, you could use, you could make tax assessor maps official and you could identify land with those maps and then a tax assessor parcel number. That's not how we do it in the United States. And different systems have different trade-offs. Okay. But, so those are the three things that you need the cadastral system to do. Now, I've got this question here. This unanswered question, so they don't really talk about this in the book, but it's a good question to think about. So here's the question I want you guys to think about. Why is the protection of land rights so important for economic growth and the wealth of societies? And we touched on it a little bit, but think about that. Why is it so important? Why do we find around the world nations that have a, a poor land, a poor land system, a poor cadastral system tend to be poor, and nations with good, strong cadastral systems, cadastral systems that work well and do a good job protect, of protecting property, why do we find those, that those societies tend to be wealthier. And there's actually a, a book, somebody wrote a book. I think the, the last name is DeSoto, and I apologize, I don't know the first name. I think it might be Henry DeSoto, wrote a book about, and it, uh, the whole book is about why places with good cadastral systems tend to be wealthier. And I bought the book. Uh, my compliments to Mr. DeSoto. He tackled a very tough topic. I found the book was really hard to read. <laughs> probably because I'm not an economist. Uh, but there, there's whole books that have been written about this concept of why land rights are so important for, for wealthy societies, for economically vibrant societies. Okay, so that's chapter one. I'm going to go ahead and clear the whiteboard, and then we'll talk about chapter two, the key concepts in chapter two.